How will the mutants of Krakoa cope with the new coming of Onslaught, one of their greatest foes of all time? Well, let's hop into the pages of X-Men Onslaught Revelations issue number one and find out together, shall we? Alrighty then, first things first, even though this story is being sold as a big special issue, it's actually the finale to the first volume of what's been going on in Cy Spurrier's Way of X. Much like the trial of Magneto, I don't think you necessarily need to know what's going on in Way of X to appreciate what's going on here, but it will certainly certainly only help you, so be sure to either catch up or check out my videos on the subject. So then, as we join the proceedings, people on Krakoa are starting to act very weird. They're all getting pulled towards the Crucible, except for Pixie, that is, who ends up getting pulled through a portal by Nightcrawler. It would seem that Onslaught, one of the X-Men's old foes, who is a psychic fusion of the physical might of Magneto and the mental power of Charles Xavier, has returned. Not in a physical form, mind you, but instead a psychic boogeyman form eating up all the excess psychic energy left behind every time a mutant is resurrected. Pixie got resurrected not that long ago. Which explains why she was seeing Onslaught-related hallucinations. Nightcrawler has taken her to the Cosmic Altar, a brand new plane of existence created by David Haller, aka Legion. And when I say created, I mean this whole thing literally exists within his own vast and powerful mind. Kirk and Legion have been dealing with this Onslaught problem since it started, and they hoped that using the cosmic altar as a staging ground will allow them to strike back at their phantom foe. Pixie is going to help too by being their boots on the ground and using her psychic knives to free people from Onslaught's control, and she better move quickly as some very powerful and influential mutants are under Onslaught's control. The biggest threat of all is of course Professor X himself who has fallen to Onslaught's sway without even realizing it. It's while under Onslaught's control Professor X has started deleting all the mental backup stored in Cerebro, basically the key to the mutants' resurrection protocols. Onslaught's ultimate endgame, basically, is to instill a sense of mania within the young mutant community, have them party it up, yuck it up, and then eventually all kill each other at midnight as part of his big bloody return to the physical plane. Again, if you haven't been reading Way of X, one of the interesting things about this story has been about Nightcrawler trying to build a mutant religion, and it's in this way we can kind of see them treat Onslaught as the de facto Satan or adversary for this new religion, but how exactly do you defeat a foe like Onslaught? Well, that's basically where the meat and potatoes of the issue come in. You see, one of the other things Nightcrawler has desperately been trying to work on is restorative justice for the mutant community in the age of Krakoa, which is a lot easier said than done. His case zero for this new practice was Fabian Cortez and a new mutant named Lost. Cortez had killed this poor woman's family, and she ended up getting sold off to be experimented on afterwards. In the last issue of Way of X, Nightcrawler had tried and failed quite spectacularly to get these two to try and better understand and ultimately forgive each other, but here in the astral plane, where all minds are one, Nightcrawler thinks that he actually stands a better chance at getting them to reconcile here and now. Cortez, truly loathsome little worm that he is, catches a couple glimpses of damnation in hell, something that the mutants don't have to worry about anymore now that they've overcome death, while also seeing the horrors that Lost suffered for growing up. Naturally, he tries to make his own excuses, but eventually we actually get to look inside his own brain. Cortez talks about how he always hated himself, how from a young age even he knew that he was a spoiled rich kid who never tasted any hardship in his life. That's why when he got mutant powers, he threw himself so fully completely into the fight for mutant rights and eventually mutant supremacy. In fact, he always thought himself so lame he never even got a cool code name. His mutant name is his human name because he's just not very creative. There's also something of a sad irony to his powers, too. Cortez can't be amazing on his own. He can only boost the amazing powers of mutants around him. This is why he chose to essentially live in the shadow of a great mutant like Magneto for the rest of his life. And hey, speaking of Magneto, we get a great scene where an Eric under the control of Onslaught tries to put the fear into Pixie, saying that no weapon can pierce his skin. Luckily, a psychic dagger isn't made of metal. In fact, we actually get to see a lot of the minor characters from the first few issues of Way of X kind of get their moment in the sun right here. Dr. Nemesis gets to use a bunch of those mushrooms that he's been growing on his person to try and calm all the mutant party goers and get them to give up on the mania that Onslaught has been putting in their head. Likewise, Dazzler takes control of the DJ booth and moves the party over to the astral plane, where they hope everyone can be safe from Onslaught's assault. But of course, the only real way to defeat Onslaught is for Nightcrawler to come full circle on his story from the very first issue, and that is finally come up with a brand 
brand new mutant faith that all of Krakoa can gather around. Something that he was only able to do once he solved the problem between Lost and Fabian Cortez. Lost says that she'll still probably always hate Cortez, but this meeting in the mind's eye means she at least understands him. And with that, the spark is born. What is the spark? Well, it's the brand new mutant religion, but not exclusively for mutants, as Nightcrawler goes on to explain. Kirk describes the spark as a way of loving and fighting and expressing and being. It moves us to adapt without restraint. It doesn't require prayer nor veneration. It does not demand that you put away your old guards. The spark is not jealous. It's an innovation. It's mischievous and courageous. It's an antithesis to the meaningless and the emptiness that Kirk feared that mutant society would end up falling into in a post-death, post-mortality world. There's also some fine print right there at the end, too, about the spark being powerful enough to burn away anyone or name redacted who would threaten mutant happiness and progress. So, you know, love thy neighbor, turn the other cheek, but also don't screw with me or else. This very literal revelation ends up giving Kurt and his team the power they need to ultimately vanquish Onslaught, who we discover was actually sent to Krakoa in the first place by Orchis stowing away within the anger and hate of Lost. And because Lost was ultimately able to find solace in her dealings with Fabian Cortez, that means Onslaught has nothing to hold on to anymore, and the good guys are ultimately able to vanquish him once again. So yeah, the day is saved, and the people of Krakoa finally have a brand new faith for all of them to gather around. In fact, they're going to keep using Legion's Mind Palace as their base of operation and house of worship. Why, Nightcrawler and his apostles have formed quite a team too, but what are they going to call themselves? Are they mutant priests, mutant Jedis? No, they're going to be legionaries. And so that was X-Men Onslaught Revelation issue number one, everyone, and I thought it was a pretty solid conclusion to Cy Spirier's Way of X storyline. I don't know why it needed a special issue to finish itself off, except for maybe being a little bit longer and to confuse a lot of people who just picked it up on the shelf randomly because they like Onslaught. I appreciate this book for going out of its way to deal with such hard and heady topics as religion, faith, the soul, where we go when we die, etc, etc. It was also really the perfect showcase for Nightcrawler, a character who I think embodies so much of what the fan base loves about X-Men and superhero comics in general. And this story especially sees him grappling over whether or not the choices he's making is right, and if he even has, you know, the authority to try and save the souls of those around him. I'm not gonna call it a perfect slam dunk like some of those early Way of X issues were. Ultimately, despite building up Onslaught as this huge evil threat that lives in the heart of all mutant kind, he was defeated rather easily by love, understanding, and the friends we made along the way. Likewise, I think Spurrier really overestimated how much people were going to feel sympathetic for Fabian Cortez at the end. If anything, he does too good a job making him an unredeemable piece of crap. Then again, if Nightcrawler is meant to be the Jesus of this new mutant religion, let us not forget that his own apostles were made up of sex workers, tax collectors, and at least one guy who betrayed him anyway. So I guess the moral of the story is to spread the spark it takes all types. Overall, I'd give this one an 8 out of 10. This is pretty solid, and I think it's going to read really well in collection, too. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.